I'm your host, Greg David, and on this episode of Table of Cinema, we'll be discussing the new film, Needle in a Time Stack. This discussion will be full of spoilers, therefore I recommend to go watch it first if you haven't already, and then come back to this video and watch our discussion. Table Chatter presents Table of Cinema. Welcome to Table of Cinema. We have Bianca and we have Wetson. Appreciate uh, the two of you for being here. Um, the movie that we are discussing today is Needle in a Time Stack. I really enjoyed this movie, I would say. I, I just want to start off by saying that. It's definitely a movie that makes you think. And there's a lot of quotables. There's a lot of, I, I took a lot of notes. So I know you can't probably can't see it, but I'll uh, I'll go over them. So um, this is not going to be like a formal review where I'm going through every single scene of the whole movie. Um, mm -hmm. But what I'll do is I'll just start things off by talking about like the beginning of the movie real quick, which will we'll be able to like dive into it after that, right? So in the movie, um, it starts off with a, a quote by Janine. She's speaking into the camera and she says, love is drawn in the form of a circle. No one knows where it begins and it never really ends. You and I are forever, always and always. All right. And then, um, you know, so that's how we're introduced. So before I continue, what are your thoughts on that? Just that wording, that quote, that line. Um, cause it's, there's a lot in that. No, you want me to repeat it? Yeah, just one time. Okay. Love is drawn in the form of a circle. No one knows where it begins and it never really ends. You and I are forever, always and always, you know, and that's when uh, Janine was making that video for Nick which right. we'll find out after. But that quote struck me. That's one of the quotes that struck me. So, Yeah, with the um, the whole with the circle, that's what I was looking at as kind of like a cycle, you mm -hmm. know, almost like a season. And then with the whole time, like when they're changing the time, each time she's saying no matter what, however many time shifts they have, that our love is still continuous to each one. Whether we know each other, whether we don't know each other, like that, it's still there. It remains the test of time. It's yeah. kind of like what I get from it. But she's telling you that before you know. You know, you kind of hear right. it in, it starts to formulate as you continue to watch. You're like, oh, okay. But in the beginning, you're like, okay, something's going to happen. Something, some, their love is going to be tested somehow. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um, any, any quick thoughts on, on that quote before I continue, Watson? Um, it's very interesting, and it's actually the first time I've heard it put that way before. Right. I've heard it, you know, uh, put that way, like, "Hey, love is drawn in a circle," you know. And then, I guess the part that struck me is the fact that you don't know where it begins, and it never really ends because you know you're thinking like literally, you know, circle infinity loop is just like. And of course, whenever we've seen like you know where they we've seen like you know necklaces, what about love? We'll see like you know some infinity band of some sort or infinity symbol. So it was interesting because I've seen the Infinity one before. I've never seen it, you know, so I never he heard it talked about in the form of a circle. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting to me. But, you know, so I guess in the, that part was, you know, was new and uh, interesting way to put it. So, oh, For sure. And then there's yeah. another quote that I wrote from Nick, which he repeats throughout the movie. He says, um, if I didn't know you, would I still fall in love with you? I think I wrote that right. If I didn't know you, would I still fall in love with you? And this is a question that he asked both women in, in the different parts of the movie. He asked Janine at one point, and then he said the same thing 
to um Alex, right? What mm-hmm. else did I write here mm-hmm. in my notes? Uh, let's see here. Time shift. So what are your thoughts on the whole time shift thing, right? Let's fast forward. There's a scene um, in the beginning where Nick is at work. He's in some type of, you know, work meeting. And then there's a time shift. And, and I'll just point this out. I noticed that the time shift, some people would affected them and some people it didn't. Nick was affected immediately with the nosebleed. But as you can see, some colleagues, nothing happened to them. I have a theory on this, but I would like your theories on the significance of that. Um, Bianca, wh- what, do you, what, do you, what do you think is the significance of him being affected like that and other people not? I think that it depends on, it goes back to that circle. I think that there's the people who have been affected, like in the past, maybe their love story has been challenged or what have you, or changed in some way. They're the ones who have the effects. Like he had, Nick had the nosebleed and his wife had the nosebleed, but she lied about it when they were on the phone. She was like, oh, everything's fine, you know, and everything and everything, but it wasn't for her. Um, And other people who did not have anything, you know, I think that their love story, uh, whatever, wherever they are in that circle or in their life, it hasn't been affected by the time shift, but it kind of seems like the nosebleed or what have you is a after effect of the time shift. It kind of seems, that's kind of what I yeah. kind of saw, like an after a side effect of a time shift when your, when your life has been affected by it. But if you haven't been affected by the time shift, then it seems as if everything's okay. Like, right, that's right. what it came across. I yeah, guess. that's what that's what I think too. So once I'm gonna ask you two two questions. Do you agree with Bianca? Mm-hmm. That's one. And two, why do you think Janine lied or like made it seem like the way that she was speaking to him on the phone is like, don't worry about it, you don't have to panic. But then when she hangs up, you see her holding her nose and she's bleeding too. Why would she just not tell him that yeah, I'm I'm experiencing the same thing as you? Okay. Um to answer that question. I have an idea why she lied. Okay. And the reason is because this is not the first time this happened. And as we could see how Nick was very persistent about it. And the fact that, you know, he feel like he stole her from, you know, from, from Tommy, from the other guy. So because of that, it tells me that she's dealt with this before. Whenever there's a time shift, the first thing he goes back to worry about is whether or not, you know, um, their marriage will be affected or, you know, she would want to go back to him or like, you know, it would like have that kind of effect one, one way or another. Mm-hmm. So I feel like she lied because she's like, you know, oh man, here we go again. And she's like, yo, you don't, we don't have to like do this every single time as a time shift. It's just, it's just something that happens. This is what life is. This is what life is like now. So, you know, let's just, you know, move on with it. Mm-hmm. So you think, I think, you, I think that's what she lied. No, uh, that's a good point. I agree. Um, yeah. I, you know what, too? I realized, too, as you're as both of you are speaking, I'm thinking that she's lying to protect the relationship and to protect him from himself because she doesn't yeah. want him worrying. And, you know, he's very insecure about the whole about their whole how they came together. And mm-hmm. he's got a lot of insecurities there and he's afraid and scared. Not, only that, but he's, not only that, but he's he's also <laughs> very intense. Like, yes, you know, he's very intense. <laughs> And as you can see, she's more laissez-faire and more like, you know, more relaxed, more laid back. Like, listen, things happen. This is life. And even when she was like, you know, later on, she was talking to him and telling him like, yes, I guess I'm with you. Like, this is, you know, we're together. Like, yes, I, you know, yes, I saw my ex-husband or whatever, but it's like, you, you were married. I was with him for almost eight years. Like, you know, you can't just like, you know, you know, snap your finger and make that disappear. But I'm with mm-hmm. you. She she always constantly had to like had to like do that because he's so very he's so intense. So it's like for every little thing, it's a it's a big deal to him. And I think that's why, you know, she was, you know, the way she was. Yeah. yeah. And and it it was interesting because um when she was speaking to him on the phone, she's like, Oh, you don't have to worry, nothing happened, right? You see that she's holding her nose, something happened. And now when Nick comes home from that incident, you see that something has happened. How? Because Charlie, the dog, is now a cat. Mm -hmm. Charlie is all of a sudden a cat. And it's like, it's weird because from what I'm seeing with the time shift thing is that even though he came home and he knew that he had the time shift at work, 
he forgot that the dog used to be a dog and that is now a cat. Because when he saw the cat, he just identified it as Charlie. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, why is there a cat here? I mean, later on, we see that he's like, I don't like cats. Right. But in yeah. that moment, when he came home, it was like their normal life. So that means that yeah. that tells mm -hmm. me that the past was changed <laughs> leading up to it because he had this whole new memory of saving the cat because they talk about the cat. They talk yeah. about how. Continue. You know, like, how he said, how he said that, you know, um, when he mentioned, you know, when he mentioned the cat, she says, well, you told us that, you know, if we didn't save him, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be here or he would be gone if, right. you know, if we didn't take him in. So it's like, okay, so something did change and, you know, she's aware of it and she's just like, well, you know, this is kind of, this is just our life. Mm -hmm. And for him, it was just like, yeah, I see that. But then you know, it's almost like residual memory he had. From a previous, from the previous life, and now this leads me to a a, a, a random question because you know what this got me thinking about. This got me thinking about deja vu. How in our lives, I know that we've all. I know what's in his mad type. <laughs> I know that we've all experienced at some point a deja vu type of feeling where we're experiencing something for the first time, right? At least we think we are, but then there's something deep within that's like. No, we've done this already. Have any one of you ever had that? I know I have. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you? And Definitely. and and of and what do you think that is? Do you think that could be a time shift? <laughs> what <laughs> what do you think that is? I'm dead serious. Like I think it's just a familiarity. Like you you've been in that situation before. There's certain But how? Signs. You've never been there before. No, I'm saying a certain situation doesn't, you don't have to be there. Something has happened to you where you have that feeling, a feeling that, you know what, I, I've been in this situation before, maybe not in this place or with these people, but in a situation like this before, and this is what happened, or this is, you know, it's, it's like a familiarity, I think, with a previous experience, but not exactly being in the same place or with the same people. Okay, so now Wetson, okay. I'm going to piggyback on that. What about when you meet people? Like you meet a person who you met for the first time, but you feel like you met them before. How can that apply? Okay. You know. Um, I promise, fo follow me here. I promise I'm not high. I'm not drunk. <laughs> Just follow me through this here. Okay. There's a comedian online that's, that he, made, uh, he had made a joke in... He was saying that we have no way of proving that this is not a simulation. Like the life we're living right now, we have no way of proving that it's not a simulation and that, you know, we're not just like, you know, going through some motions or some program similar to like some matrix like shit. He said, we have no way of proving that. And I thought, I thought about it and deja vu is the first thing that comes to mind. Like mm -hmm. deja vu, and feeling like, you know, you've met this person before and something of that nature. So for me, that was interesting, for one. And um, as far as, like, you know, what it actually is, I think there's, um, oh, the, the second thing I was going to mention about, about is the fact that I read, uh, I used to read a lot of comic books. And in one of the comic books, and this is the part that they always tell you about the, 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 the character Black Panther, when he becomes a Black Panther, he now has all the memory and experiences of every previous Black Panther before mm, him. That's dope. So he <laughs> has all, you know, he has, he has, uh, you know, so if, if anybody before him, like, you know, fought somebody or defeated somebody or went through an experience, he now has all those experiences, you know, as well, which makes every single, which makes every successor of the, of the character stronger than the previous one. Because they have all the all the characters to discuss out of the previous one plus their own. Mm. So mm. and what I'm thinking about that is the fact that now there's a lot of things about the brain we still can't we still can't, can't understand or explain. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things about DNA we can't understand or explain. Which is why, you know, you could have a kid, you know, like you could have a kid born and raised here, but they love, you know, but then you know, like it seems like it almost seems like there's something about them that like trace back to the roots, your roots 
or to like you know behaving like grandparents they never met or they, 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 they never came around or mm -hmm. behaving like for like you know like for example um my mother used to always say like my little sister was just like my grandmother mm. although they, you know, but by the way they had like the same birthday like you know both april 27th and then you know like so she always say she acts just like my grandmother but the thing about it is, is like that my sister did not meet my grandmother until she was like almost three years old and even mm. then she didn't know her for, for long enough because my grandmother died at, at that point so she always said she act like her and it's like there's so much that we don't understand that i think to some extent and i have no way of proving this i have no way of knowing this is true or not there's no i have no reason to believe this but i think to some extent maybe like you know, there's something connected you know, that connects us with our past with our ancestors and our previous one that came before us and that could be why we experience certain things like mm. deja vu like familiarity with places or people we've never met and so something like that but again don't quote me on this because i have no mm -hmm. way of knowing this is, if this is true i have no I, i've done no research in it whatsoever but it's something i've thought about i'm just like mm. i mean at this point anything is possible so yeah that's you know my explanation i mean for, everything for you said is related to like with dna and with traits even of how we yeah. look you're carrying like we might have a nose of one of our ancestors from centuries ago that's still on yeah. this earth because of the dna and because of traits and so why would it not carry on into personality and and how and how we may think about things so i agree yeah and so you know that mm -hmm. go ahead no, I was going to say, so so. Um, I'm not sure if it was the same scene or uh, a scene after. We have a, a little argument between Nick and Janine where Nick believes that the reason why these time shifts keep happening is because Tommy is trying to get Janine back. And mm -hmm. he. this is his theory. And one, one thing I can say right off the bat about Nick is that he's very intuitive. Right? And... I'm wondering if Janine is as intuitive, but like um, not acknowledging it or if he's just more intuitive than her. And the reason why I'm not sure is because in the beginning of the argument, he's mentioning Tommy. He believes that Tommy is trying to get her back and she denies it. But then at the same time, she eventually admits that she went to go see him. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to, why would you go see him? If you didn't think he was up to something. So it almost seems like she was trying to move more in silence. And that goes back to her hiding the nosebleed thing. It's like she's trying mm -hmm. to take care of things behind the scenes where so that way he it doesn't like uh ruffle feathers. Whereas he's just yeah. whereas he's just open with it and he's like, you know what? Here's what it is. Tommy's doing this, and maybe I should go back in time and cause him an accident. Like he said, she knows she knows he's, he's paranoid and insecure. Mm -hmm. So she tries to, you know, she tries to, you know, like handle things, so to speak, you know, before it gets to that point, before he gets to the point where, you know, where he's obsessive and, you know, and compulsive and act, you know, in those kinds of ways. So, yeah, I think I, 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 I think, you know, the reason why she's, she, you know, she does that is because she knows who he is and how he is. So she decides, you know, in order to, you know, like handle things before he before he escalates because you know like what you say is intuition it's literally his insecurities and paranoia manifesting into everything he does into everything he believes into everything he sees so, so is that, real, is that like, really insecurity or is that just him knowing what's going on <laughs> it's insecurity like he's unstable and she loves him and she knows like you know that he how he is feeling and she knows that with that energy with that his anxiety about the whole thing he can take it to a whole nother level to where they possibly won't be together which i'm not gonna tell the rest of the story or whatever but i'm just saying she knows mm -hmm. that he could end up doing something very detrimental to both of them so hey, she's is, able to, oh go ahead this is not spoiler free you could you could speak freely like mm -hmm. 
Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, like how when they ended up being apart and he was with the other woman, his other wife, mm -hmm. like if he had went and tried to do something detrimental, not thinking, just working off of his insecurities, who knows? They probably would not have ever found each other or would not be together. So I think she was just trying to keep it together. Like, let me go ahead and talk to him. I know how to talk mm. to him. I was married to this man. I know him. You're, you were friends with him, but I was married to him. And then he kept saying, yo, he kept saying, you know, oh, I stole you. I didn't steal you from her, from him or whatever. And she was trying to tell him like, look, this is no stealing. I chose to be with you. Yes, I was married to him. I divorced him. I mm. wanted to be with you. She kept trying to make him feel secure. Like, look, he can't take me. He can't get me. I don't want him. I'm with you. And yes, he, he may... You know, you're thinking he's under this time warp thing. But mm -hmm. so I think she was trying to go and talk to the guy because she knew how to talk to him, make sure everything's yeah. good. That's that, you know, but he doesn't know how to talk. He doesn't know how to talk. You saw what happened at the meeting when he went to go talk to the guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's, that wasn't a good so, meeting at that lunch. So I think, I think, I think that's what I'm saying. I think it's safe to say it's his insecurity and paranoia mm -hmm. that just manifested into, you know, um, into everything else, and um, because as you can see, for most of the people, a time shift or a ripple in time, they've basically come accustomed to their oh, that's just how modern life work now. Mm -hmm. We have time shift and you know thing, but for him, every single time something what was happening, it's almost like mm, I need to, I, I need to verify this and check. Like it's like you know, it's a you know, it just keep manifesting over and over again. You know so, why? Because, because Fred, which led which led to him being miserable the entire time that time that but, and if but you're the, miserable the love is not really there she's trying to say okay look we're through this let's let's love let's have a good time it was his birthday for god's sake and yeah. look how it ended you know it's like this is your birthday and you're still hung out on this and like um what weston said at that meeting everybody else took it like a champ you know the manager was like look okay everybody call home and check on your loved ones or whatever as soon as he calls her he's like what's your name who are you married who married to what is your name what is my name it was just like boom, 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 mm -hmm. like dag, dude. Everybody else was just chill, like, babe, are you okay? Hey, yeah, okay, but, but, and that to work. But I think his here's what I think. Yes, yes, we can call it insecurity, but <laughs> his insecurity is a little bit different because How? his no. insecurity, his insecurity is because he knows that Tommy is literally trying to take his wife away from him. And then, as we see later on, when the big time shift happens, that big wave, Tommy yeah, right. succeeds and takes his girl away from him. You don't peep that, right? He was in, uh, in the first time shift. He was he was afraid that he lost her, but in the I believe it was the second time shift, he did lose her. He did lose her when he, he went did. home. When he went home, his wife was Alex. You said, right. you said, you said, is it insecurity? I, okay, I don't but really think though. it's, I don't think, I don't think it's like insecurity as we know it. For him, it's but, more, but, it's more like an intuition, um, bad feeling type of thing. Out of his insecurity, if he, if per personally, if he would have never had, I think if he would never had that lunch with him and the wife just, because the wife had already handled it before he even knew when he went ahead and had the whole nah. um, lunch. No, no, she, she, she thought she handled it, but I think no. Tommy, I think Tommy was still up to his, to his, uh, his plan, Question. his mastermind plan. Question: mm -hmm. Who's to say that lunch is not what set Tommy over the edge to the point where he went? Thank he did, you know, he did, you know, he did, you know, he did, he went all, all in to he cause went. the big time shift. Because I mean, he was really petty at because, the end. You saw at lunch. Because, because, yeah, because you know, because it seems, because it seems like you know, like for Tommy, you know, like even when he was saying. Oh yeah, you know, like she, could, you know, he could be trying, and she's like, dude, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter if he tries. Nobody can break us or take or take or, or, take, or split us apart. That's one of the best us. lines of the movie. That's one of the best. Yeah, lines. and it's like, yeah. and it's like, and for him, it's like that wasn't clicking. So, yeah. like, so we say is this still an insecurity or intuition? But um, it can be both. Like you know, because guess what. Yeah, because guess what? Once you start being insecure about something, now all your intuition is going to tell you that the thing you're scared about or you're concerned about is, is coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. So we could argue this two ways. We could argue that his into his his insecurity is is is, a, is an intuition or a gut feeling, knowing that something sinister is happening, 
Or you could argue, like you said, that his insecurity is what's making things happen. So that's a good argument. That's a good... Yeah, um, insecurity is what made it. him obsess on his fear so much that his, he, it's almost like he manifested his fear that's, to come to fruition. That's one way to look yeah. at it. The other, way, the other way to look at it is that his gut was correct in telling him that something was wrong. Okay. It and wasn't. That's, that's what made him... him if he would have never... Oh, go ahead, Wes. No, no, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> question, though, question, though. You say, you know, or it could be that, you know, his gut was telling him that, you know, of all those things. Now, here's the thing. Could that gut, could, could that gut feeling have come from, since, you know, since, since, if you will argue that part, mm -hmm. let's say that gut feeling is coming from a place of unresolved guilt because he felt that, you know, he stole her from his best friend. So could that gut feeling be like, oh, well, you know what? For example, it's equivalent of like, you know, some, you robbing somebody or, you know, like something like that. You steal something and all of a sudden you're afraid of robbers. Like, you're afraid of all, everything that you're guilty of, you're not putting it, as the, you're putting it out there on everybody else like, hmm, are they lying to me? Meanwhile, because you know you've been lying to them. So now you start thinking to yourself like, hmm, are they lying? Are they lying? Are they lying? So now that gut feeling... It could be coming from a place of guilt, which will still be then a problem because, like, again, you make it see you, like. And here's something I posted. Uh, I posted this on Facebook the other day, and and here's what here's the thing I was thinking about. You have far more control than you think, right? Simultaneously, you have far less control than you think. I did read that. Mm -hmm. That was good because you know because again. He can control himself. He can control how he reacts to things and all that. But at the same time, what he was doing was not controlling himself and how he feels and how he reacts to all those things. And then he started putting it on other people. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's projecting. So, he was projecting his yeah. insecurity on everyone else. And everybody else was secure with it. The woman, his wife was secure with her love for him. He was projecting his insecurity that, you know, oh, I stole you. You know, yes. from the guy, and then went to the guy and insulted the guy. Remember, he was like, everyone thought I was this rich guy, this poor rich mm -hmm. guy, whatever. Mm -hmm. And he was setting him off. He even remember, he even set off his own sister, and his sister mm -hmm. was trying to help him. Remember, he was on the phone with his sister, and, and the sister mm -hmm. had to hang up with him because he went off on her. He was pushing off on her. And she was <clears> yes. Help him. The so reason, every, so the reason, so basically, Nick, Nick was a villain of, of the movie. Um. I don't think so. I think I think the real villain <laughs> is Tommy, but I think mm -hmm. that Tommy, Tommy, when he only saw Tommy one time, and that was it. Like everything no, else, that was no, brewing, no, you that know, you know, you know. No, Tommy yeah, is the real villain, but uh, Tommy, go ahead, go ahead. Tommy, I wait, I wait. Tommy is a is a secret villain. He's a secret villain, and throughout the movie, uh, Nick is trying to uncover the sinister of Tommy. But Tommy is able to hide that he's a villain because his villainous is by go by jaunting they call it through time. The the those those right. time shifts are happening because of Tommy, be not because of um, no, not because of Nick. I can prove it. Listen, you were only they were only allowed it. to have I'm, like three. It was like the I'm, normal amount is three. But look, yes, I'm, Tommy I'm gonna, has money, so he's I'm gonna able prove. to. I'm going to prove I'm going to prove that Tommy is the bad guy. Okay. 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 There's a part in the movie. All right. Before I even get to that, when Tom when Nick confronted Tommy at the bar where, wherever they were. Mm -hmm. Tommy, if you if you if you re remember the words that he said when he responded to Nick, Tommy was upset that Nick stole his woman from him. And he was like, he was like, um, I think he said he was with her and he felt he, Tommy did feel that he said something slick. He said, something he slick. did feel that his woman was stolen from him. He did feel that that's one. So it's not like, it's not like Nick was just insecure. He did. Tommy was upset. Tommy was also, upset. Also, Tommy did also did say in the, in the same one where he said he was upset, but Tommy also did say that. There's been one time in my life I felt lucky, and that's yep. when I met her. Right. So, which means, and and then he, he all, in that same conversation where we you know where he was just some slick. He also <laughs> acknowledged that. He also acknowledged that 
he wasn't exactly the best husband, or you know, like he's he, you know, like Nick is not to blame for her leaving. He also he also you know he, 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 he also mentioned that you know in, in the conversation. So in in that one, oh, while Tommy was upset about you know about his girl being you know, being gone and, and me taken away, mm-hmm. he also took some accountability where he's like, you know what? Yeah, I definitely had had part you know had my part to play in this. Meanwhile, Nick, and this is the this is the part I was gonna mention. I, I also I, I always see these things online where they talk about you know um where, where you know they will give you like two versions. They'll be like, oh, the movie villain versus the real villain, right? For example, um when they uh when they talk about the, the movie like uh, I think one of the movies was like uh the, the um Infinity War, right? Marvel mm-hmm. Infinity War. They were saying the movie villain Thanos because of what he wanted to do. And then they show, and they say the real villain, and they show you all the heroes and where the parts where they where they failed at is what caused Thanos to win at the end. Where it's like those guys were like real villains, or at least you know, like were definitely mm-hmm. as much to you know to blame as the villain that you know, the movie tells you. So in that in that sense, if you're talking about Tommy, like Tommy's the movie villain, you know, because he's causing time ripples, he's going back and forth in time to do to get his way. But then, if you look at it, like Nick had a lot of parts to play in that that caused his own and you know his own demise as well as everybody else's or his own, like you know. Mm. So yeah. he definitely had parts to play in that so because it's so it's so go ahead it's so important. It's so important where it's, where, where, where it's like you know it's you know it's, it's you know it's pissing off his wife, um, his sister his best friend or, or the villain, <laughs> his sister, like everybody he comes in contact with. Has to not has to deal with you know with his ways with you know with his sadness or depression or his guilt they they all have to deal with you know with him. Mm-hmm. So I wrote I wrote a note right. I'm trying to read my my chicken scratch. I wrote here that Tommy manipulated uh, the relationship of uh, Nick and Janine uh, by him jaunting right through the travel because and Tommy. Tommy prevented Nick and Janine from having children. You remember, you remember that scene where uh, mm-hmm. Nick said to Janine, he was like, we probably had children. And then all of a sudden you saw um, a, a vision, right, of Nick and Janine with children. Mm-hmm. My theory, I truly believe that that was the future. From, from that point when they were arguing that, that was the future of the children that they would have had if Tommy didn't interfere. Because Tommy interfered, they never had the children. Okay. Because because okay. because Tommy interfered, it made it made it made that not possible because Tommy disturbed the harmony of the relationship. So that's okay. why they never had the children. Even but if they, Tommy they, w- they would have had the children if Tommy did not interfere and do the time shift. They would even have if, had children. Even if Tommy did do that because he was jaunting, I don't think that was intentional. That wasn't intentional. He was just jaunting. No, I'm not saying jaunted, that would do for anybody. So mm. that particular, like if they did have children and that happened, the children were going just like the switch of the dog and the cat. But the kids yeah. are gone. Maybe, maybe it was the kids, and then the kids turned to the dog, and then the dog turned to the cat. Who knows? You also, know. also, also, while Tommy had you know the resources to to go jaunting and back and forth through time, he didn't create time travel. He didn't create you know the you know the time shift. He didn't create those. He just made, he just take advantage of you know take advantage of them because he's able you know he has the resources too. But he didn't create those things. Like he didn't create that. I have the a theory movie made it clear. The Tommy thing, man. I have a theory with the him. movie. The, 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 the movie did, they never said that, you know it was like something that he created and then just used for his own you know purposes. It's just like yeah, something he, that something yeah. that's something that's possible. And because he has the resources, he could go back, you know, back and forth. For example, it's like you know, it's like um, Elon Musk didn't didn't invent you know space travel or travel to the moon or to the Mars. Right, whatever. Right. He didn't invent that, but he has the resources now. He could take a trip there, uh, you know, uh, 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 every six months, and you know, and it, it, it won't be an issue for him. 
Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you Tommy know, was yeah. obs- Tommy was not uh, obsessing over Nick them. Nick was obsessing over Tommy. Because Tommy because he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. That's why like the 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 like his into okay, here's what I believe, right? I believe <laughs> that the destiny, this is what the movie doesn't really it, it, it does touch on it, but it doesn't really explain it. Like you have to kind of figure it out. That whole quote in the beginning of the movie is Janine basically saying that her and Nick are meant to be forever. Mm-hmm. They're meant right. to be. They're, they're soulmates, right? They are soulmates. Right. Nothing, nothing can get in between, right? I had a right. point. I, I, I'm trying to remember where I was going with this. Um, um, okay. Okay. They were meant to be, right? But Tommy is trying to he's trying to to interfere but at the end of the day they they are still going to be okay I remember now they're still going to be and this is why this is why no matter what um when something wrong happens like to like when when Nick went back which he didn't do on purpose but when the time shift happened he ended up with Alex his spirit, mm-hmm. his soul knew that this is not the oh, right God. person he's supposed to be with. Something is off. He's supposed to be with with Janine, even though he kind of forgot her after a while. You know what I'm saying? Like, the spirit hey, knows yeah, that but... something... Like, his spirit was not at peace when he was with Alex. Even I though Alex my... was very nice. I have my own theory about that. Okay. His spirit was not at peace because... Nick is not. Nick was never at peace at any point in time. That part. At no. At no point. At no point in the movie did you see Nick at peace or happy. And even I when think, he was, it was temporary. Yeah, because Tom, of because Tommy, of his because of his neurotic ways. I so, think Tommy you know, disturbed you know, peace. Tommy did not disturb no, peace. No, he Nick was never at peace. peace. Even Nick when he was, got like, Nick her, was supposedly from Tommy, as he believes, he still was never at peace. Like he was again, never at no, at no point did he seem like you know he was like happy. You know, when he got the girl, not at peace. When he got the other girl, not at peace. When he was alone, not at peace. This is like at this point, the only common denominator is you. When okay, Tommy, you know, listen, Tommy, you know, Tommy mentioned like you know taking over his father's business. Right, you know, like before him and Nick went to lunch, right? You see how he was, even though he was, you know, he was upset and sad about losing his girl. He was still, for the most part, happy with his life. Tommy, at the end of the movie, was you know was talking about the fact that, oh yeah, my father wanted me to take away his business. I didn't. I created my own. I work a whole lot. And he was still at peace. So you see, it's like no, no, no. Tommy was not at. Tommy was at peace at the end. But uh, when when they sat when Nick confronted him and they were talking uh, they were having their little argument or whatever, Tommy was I would argue he was not at his best version of himself. He was the best version of himself okay. when he in the end Quick when question. he ended up with Quick Alex question. and had his own business. Quick question. Quick he, question. When were, when did when did Nick have a best version of himself? When was Nick his best version of himself? Of himself. When he was Nick, Nick was <laughs> Nick. Okay, definitely not when he was with Alex. That was when an was illusion. Nick the best version of himself. That's the question. But when? when was he the best when version of himself? So Nick, I think Nick was the best version of himself in the beginning, and then at the end, not the when he was with Alex. Later. And the, when he was with when he was with Janine, he was at peace. I'm not saying it no. Ended. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm not saying he was at peace. But that was his best version because he was with the person that he was supposed to be with. I would agree. I would agree that his insecurity um, messed with the peace that he could have had. But I. But again, if Tommy wasn't interfering, it would have all been good. If Tommy really? was not jaunting, trying to break him up, so hold there was so no Tommy to worry about. So hold on. So hold on. We've seen we've seen we've seen a version of Tommy where he was at peace and he was the best version of himself. We've seen a version of Alex when she was at peace and a great version of herself. We've seen the same thing with um Janine. Right. But yet 
was always the miserable one the entire I, I fucking time. I, I no, tell you why. No, no matter which, no matter which where he lived, no matter what his life turned out like, he was miserable with Janine, with Alex by himself, miserable the whole way through. Yeah, even at nobody, the end, when he found nobody, out he was gonna be a dad, remember he found out he was gonna be a dad. He, she was pregnant. He was gonna be a dad. He was still not like you never but, saw him happy. He was at anxiety the whole time through. But but nobody else was trying to break up. Like okay. There's a difference between you being the the one that's trying to break the people up, and then you being on the other side. So, all right, let, let me let me explain it to this. Let me explain it this way, right? Like, Wetson, if you're if you're with your girl, and then you know that like I'm trying to 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 interfere, uh, to to bother you, are you gonna be at peace? If yes. if, if 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 like if I'm constantly a distraction. To who? I'm just saying, if I'm a distraction to you and your relationship, how are you going to really be at peace? You're only going to be, be at peace if I'm out the picture. Sir, that would be a choice I would have to make. I would have to choose to let your, 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 whatever you do disturb me. That That's is a easy, choice. Easier said than done. It's like it's like you're in your home. It is doable, though. It is it's like you're, right. no, no, no. Let me give you another <laughs> example that, that hits it oh, home okay. better. Let's say you're sleeping in your bed. Right, mm -hmm. but you hear noise at your at your door. You you, you it sounds like somebody's trying to break in, right? Now you can say, "Yeah, I, I'm just gonna ignore it." That's a choice. Yeah, you could ignore it, Greg. But Greg, you still have Greg, the, the disturbance Greg, that you can't ignore. Your your, your pre your previous example was better because this one's worse. You know why? I have my peace. Let's, 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 Let's 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 take, let's take me, me for example. Let's take me for example. I was born and raised in Haiti in in the capital in the middle of a coup d'état, where they were literally had to like try to get rid of the president. Which means you know fireworks and gunshots. Yeah, that was you know, that that was wave sounds for me. I can foresee through that. And also, I'm a New Yorker. I lived in New York twenty years. Are you kidding me? Is there ever is there ever not noise somewhere? I live yo. You know where I live. I've lived. I live near. I lived in Rosedale, near JFK Airport, for for three years, and I've lived near JFK Airport, even closer now for the last ten. You know what that means? Airplane noise. I, I, I could determine. Yes, I could. I, I can hear. I could determine whether it's a seven forty seven or you know or seven thirty seven. You know, based on the sound, and I was still fall asleep. Which means, guess what? Let me give you. Let me give you an example. You know. Let me give you an example. Right. All the a boat can say can, can say in the water, rocky back and forth, rocky back and forth. It, yo, and that boat will still float through the water through all of it. You know when that boat will sink? When the water gets inside. If a hole is poked in that boat and water starts getting inside, that's when that, that boat will sink. So that piece that you are talking about, mm -hmm. you know, the constant disturbance talking about. You have to let it in, and Nick and Nick kept you know kept feeding the insecurity you know the disturbing. He kept feeding that with every possible like you know thing that could bother him, with every annoyance, with everything that Tommy and everybody does. He he let all that stuff in. Nick was his own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. But I think Nick only. I think the only issue with Nick was Tommy the whole movie. If you take Tommy no. out of the equation, like it was what he thought Tommy could do. It. It was because of his own insecurity. Even his wife was trying to make this tape. She's trying to like, she's the boat, like what Wetson was saying, where nothing can get in. She was that boat. He, she already knew, okay, he's not going to be able to get to us if we stay together. If you stay focused on, on one another and you know this, we'll be good. He kept thinking about Tommy all the, all the got dog on time. She's making a video. He went to the mall trying to put all the pictures on the thing for them to, you know, she was just like, you're giving him too much power. Why would, and then he got mad because she went and talked to him. Of course she went to talk to him because she knew how to talk to him. Tommy didn't know how to talk to anybody. Not his wife, not his sister, not, not Oh, Tommy. you mean Nick. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Nick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, he was his own, he, he, he was the whole part of why, of what happened. I really believe if he had not went to go talk to Tommy, it would have been fine. 
Like when he went to talk to Tommy, that did not help the case. Mm, I think Tommy had a plan. I think that um, <laughs> you Janine Tommy went. I think Janine went and spoke to him first, right? Because she knew that he was. I think Janine went there to to tell him leave us alone. That's what I think, and and to protect her relationship. And then after that, um, Nick went and saw Tommy. And I think Tommy was like, man, I'm just going to do what I want to do, do you anyway. How do you then explain Nick being miserable with Alex? And also, because his Nick spirit being is not miserable by himself. Because his spirit is not at peace. He's supposed to be with Janine. Every version of Nick was miserable. That happened for nobody else in the movie. There's and nobody you know else in the movie that was miserable the whole way through. Because because you know nobody what? because Tommy is because because Nick is being bothered by Tommy the whole movie and every okay how and okay okay how, okay how, okay how about the last version you know when you know when Nick went back in time when Nick went, you know, went back in time talked to Tommy about the fact that we're your friend you know, regardless of your money and stuff like that and Tommy became the best version of himself and you know and, and as that yeah. played out yeah you know, his own business but, he had, right? he. Was, Happy and at peace, not but, bothering Nick. Nick okay. came back still miserable. But Nick, how do you explain but, that part? But but the irony in that is that Nick, um, I mean, uh, Tommy had became his better version because of Nick. Nick went back and made sure that he he confronted himself, gave him the note, mm -hmm. and was like, "Okay, you have to break up with Alex. If he doesn't do that." Okay. If he doesn't do that, Tommy never becomes the best version of him. Sorry to interrupt. Just wanted to remind you, if you haven't done so already, to please subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell notification so you can be notified of future episodes. Also, make sure you like this video, comment your thoughts below, and share this video with your friends and family. Thank you so much. Now, back to the episode. Okay, so, okay, so, so, okay, so now Tommy's the best version of himself. Mm -hmm. He's not bothering me. He's not trying to take anything away from Nick, but Nick is still miserable. How's that Tommy's fault? So, so the reason why Nick was miserable afterwards is not because of technically it is because of Tommy, but it's because it's because his spirit. Um, he knew his spirit. It's like there was a void. It's kind of like in the Bible when 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 uh, when Adam says like you know like. When something he has that feeling that something is not right, like he's missing something. You know so why? That's why I felt like at the end when he no. turned no. back, it's because it's like, oh, okay, that's that's who I'm supposed to be with. The Bible, the Bible, or oh, the Bible said also tell you why Adam felt that void because he looked at everything else and saw that they had a pair. Every animal had a pair. Every 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 living thing had you know had a had a counterpart. He didn't. That's what I, that's what he saw, that's what that void came from, and when he saw that, he says, "Hey, what about me?" So it, 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 it wasn't out of thin air; it was a visual thing. Okay, but that was manipulated. Then that's a whole other topic. God, it's like it's like a it's like a it's like an so, advertisement. So, it's like a it's like so an advertising. So, 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 so Tommy is God. Yeah. In 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 that in the time shift world, yes, because he's manipulating stuff. You're tweaking. You are tweaking. You now. Now I'm convinced it's you're higher than Nick. And also, huh? I think with Tommy, Tommy to take by by Go Tommy. Ahead. Tommy is essentially is God by going in the going in the past and changing things. Yes, that's a godlike but, thing, and that's why time travel about, is again, so dangerous. How about, hold on. How about the part where Nick went back, told Tommy all the all the good things about you know being his friend, regardless of you know money and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. Tommy became the best version of himself. That was Nick not playing bothering God. Me. That was no, Nick hold on, no. God. Okay, so that was no. Nick playing God. Going, going right? back in time, going back in time, so hold on. manipulating the past so that so hold so on. That you so, break up. So how, is, so how is Tommy to blame for Nick's future from that point on? Because or the Tommy, because, okay, the thing is, the thing is, Tommy in the future right was trying to get the girl back and that's why he had to go back to put 
Tommy with Alex to correct it. Mm. If Tommy mm -hmm. doesn't mess with his relationship, Nick has no reason to go back in the past to fix anything because there's nothing to fix. It's but a Nick is doing that. Was, okay, but, but Nick is doing that. But Nick, but hold on. Nick messed with Tommy's relationship first. How do you know who did it first? Well, he said Nick said that he didn't get with her until after she was divorced. And, and they, guess what? He and, 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 he didn't so get she, her she, after they were divorced. And also, and also she, she also mentioned that, mm, not quite. And then the, Tommy yeah, also the said, sister mm, was saying that, right. Quite. So it's mm. like... So they so, were separated. It wasn't official yet, maybe. But, but so, that, yeah, so it was mean, a little messy. But, mean, but that's a mess. destiny thing. That's a dest The way that I interpreted it is that it's not that he stole her. It's that, that they were meant to be. He didn't steal her. It was, okay. They were so meant so to so be. So 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 when Nick do so, so you know so for Nick it's destiny, but for yes. Tommy it's playing God. Correct. How Tommy Tommy is messing. Tommy is Wh trying which to one is it? Some, Which one is Tommy? it? Is it destiny? Is it destiny or, or is it control? It can't be one or the other. Because the destiny thing. means that, destiny means nothing could you could you do couldn't do it, and control means you're in control of everything. Which one is it? So here's so the thing, right? The one, then that you're saying that it's stronger than God, then, right? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that. What I'm saying is that destiny, sound, right? right? Destiny, destiny, destiny is created by God, right? So, so they're soulmates, Janine and Nick. They're soulmates not because they made themselves soulmates; it's because they were destined to be soulmates. That's why, no matter, no matter Who what is happening, they they keep you said ending it was up made together. By God. Huh? You said destiny was made by God. So if they're destined for each other and God decides to say no, nah, then God creates a destiny. He's the one who made them so much. Okay. So right? that's okay. So let, let, let's put okay, so let, let's put it in the context of the movie, right? Mm -hmm. You said Tommy was playing God. He was mm -hmm. he was playing God, but he wasn't the real God in the end because it was meant it was meant for Nick to be with Janine, not Tommy and Janine. Who? It was it was never meant for Tommy to be with Janine. Tommy manipulated he manipulated time to get with Janine. No. Because it's check it out. It's I'll still, prove it. It's I'll still, prove it. You know. I'll prove it. You remember you remember in the part when um Janine was with Janine was with Tommy for um for eight years? Eight years. But mm -hmm. then there's another part where they say nine years. Okay. When they when they go back. Because Tommy manipulated that. Tommy manipulated it. Okay, if Tommy did it, if okay, let's put it this way: if if Nick doesn't go back, right? Okay, how? Why is it that Tommy ends up with Janine if they're not the true soulmates? Because he manipulated it. Janine was but, not supposed to be with Tommy. That was not supposed to be a real couple. Just like Alex was not supposed to be with Nick. Those are not the on, couple. Those are that, they were not de that that that's the wrong destiny. Like don't says Alec, who? Alec because because the line in the movie in the beginning, Janine says, like, you know the line. I read it. Right. When she's talking about the circle, but that was done after she was with him already. But she that knows, was, that's that's her, good, she knows that's the person she's supposed to be with. Really? Because 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 she, because she also mentioned that you know she's always gonna have love for for Tommy, regardless of how you know. Because she that said was she's gonna know, care her, about her. him not being in love with him. Okay, she, she said she's she gonna care about somebody somebody doesn't go away. I okay, think I wrote it. but so can't, okay, okay, can't you guys agree? So you see it? Can't you guys so you agree? That, okay, go on. Can't can, you guys uh, agree? Can, can we agree what? Can't you agree that the true soulmates right were? Nick and Janine, even though Nick was insecure, but those are the two that were supposed to be together, not Tommy and Janine. That's why that's why the quote has so much significance, right? Because it says, You and I are I forever, think... always, and always. They wouldn't keep repeating Greg, that line for no reason. Greg, 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 I'm of the mindset that if you put 10 coins in, in a bag and you shake it enough time. You're gonna pull out the same two pairs, you know, more than once. So so you don't think you don't think they were they were really soulmates? You think it was just happenstance? I 
think, I think, because I, I, I think, I think, because if you look at it, the movie could have given the same thing about Alex and Tommy. They could, they could have literally picked anybody they want and use that same, same scenario all the way through, and you know, and, and give us whoever they want. The movie could have, could have done that with, with anybody. They could yeah, have done but, that with Tommy, with, with, with Tommy and Alex. But Alex, Alex, and Tommy were the better fit. Okay, I'm saying okay. They could have done that. They could have done that. Okay, let's say the movie wanted to give us Tommy and Janine, right? Mm -hmm. Could they or could they not have? You know, after all this happens, you know, um, she was with Tommy. You know, you know, Janine was with Tommy. She left, went with Nick, and then you know, Nick was insecure and you know, and you know, and too into you know, and paranoid, and then he kept going back trying to change things while Tommy's trying to change things. Eventually, they say, "Oh, everything Tommy's trying to do was trying to earn his love back." His soulmate back. They could have literally given us that version because, again, the way it works is that you know if you shake, you know if you shake it long enough, anything is possible. They could have given us any version of it until it, it, you know we, we would have been like, okay, well, they were the true soulmates. That's what they told us. Okay, here's what I think. If this movie, if this movie continued, right, mm -hmm. like after where it ended, I feel like the movie would keep going in circles. It would keep going in circles like it would just keep like the same thing would just keep happening again over and over mm -hmm. again through the different phases. That's what I think. OK, there's a there's a loop. There's a loop. And and, and you know what? And you know what? And that's the thing. The movie doesn't give itself like, you know, because of that loop, it doesn't give itself a room where if they wanted to like prolong the story, it doesn't give itself much of room for that. Hmm. It doesn't give itself much of room for that. So you know, so it's like if they, if they flip if they flip that that vintage point and shift it to Alex and Tommy, right? Mm -hmm. They would have told you, oh yeah, you know, they were the true soulmates, and everything that worked to keep them apart eventually they came back together again. The movie could have given us that. It's all about the vintage point. They gave us a story that they wanted to, they wanted they wanted to be to be featured, and that's what they did. But why, but my question to both of you is why do you think um, Nick wasn't completely happy with, uh, with Alex? He was, Nick was never happy ever. So yeah, I don't right. see why he would be happy. If you're not happy. I don't see why Nick would. You, nobody's going to make you happy. There was no version like of Nick that was, was happy. Trying. Like she was, she was, she seemed happy. Like everybody else seemed secure and happy. Except there was no version of Nick that was happy. None. Except him. And they were every like every it seemed like everybody around him was always trying to make him happy or trying to keep him happy or trying yeah. to try. They were all good. He's the one who was always not happy or in fear. Or even if he wasn't in fear, like it needs to be in control of everything. Like that's a fear. I got you. But here's here's my this is why I was asking What's in that question before? I'll ask you the same question, right? If you feel like somebody is constantly trying to get between you and your partner, are you are you gonna be happy about that? I'm not gonna be happy about the person that they're trying to, but I'm gonna be secure with me and my partner because that's between me and my partner. Yeah, you're gonna be secure, but, but, but you're still gonna be annoyed. But you still be annoyed if you that's if you right. that's if you right. if you know that, that the person. That's life. There, there, there are things that are going to be annoying, but it's what you allow to get to you. If if he and I are secure and we're good, just like she was trying to do, she was trying to let him know, look, we're good. I'm with you. I want to be with you. But, She's making videos and stuff, trying to right, let him know, hey, but, it's us. But here's He's the, still here's, on, but tell me. But tell here's, me. But tell here's, me. Here's, here's my me. argument. Here's my rebuttal to that. I feel like Nick was trying to get over his insecurity. That's why he went to, the, to his wife's job it was like, listen, let's go out. He has some beautiful, a beautiful quote. He said, um, hold on, let me find this. He said, he said, we'll run away until we run out of spaces to be in. Anything we need, we'll find. Whatever we don't have, we'll buy. Just be with me always and always. They went you out. Know, you, you know? You know that's cute. You know, you know you know that's really cute. You know what I got from that? He's trying to outrun his. He's trying to outrun his own paranoia. Mm -hmm. He thinks that he thinks it. that you know he, he thinks that if you leave where he's at, 
and go on this, like you say, this super great uh, adventure where she's next to him at all times. He thinks he could outrun the insecurity and outrun, you know, the paranoia, outrun his own miserableness. That's what I got from that. That's one way you could look at it. The way that I look at it is that he was just trying to be present and just be thankful for, for, for who he had and just try to just, you know, put the Tommy thing to the side. But that got messed up. Why? Because of the stupid time shift that messed that whole thing up. That messed that whole thing up. He was trying. We, that couldn't even have a, a, a finish because it was interrupted. And then he ends up in his car. You know, you saw what happened. Right, right, and then right. he, and then his life has changed. So that made him upset because it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> You know? Yeah, but when that time, when the time shift came, that came because... Why did that you know, happen? What? Why did of that what? happen? Because, Why did... because of Tommy and what he had said to Tommy. He caused it. But if Tommy still had his Tommy own mind. Alone, he would not have talked to... I personally think that, you know what, the more I think about it, I think Tommy may have done it to, show, to because he felt that he was not being the best that he could be for his wife. He wasn't happy. Remember at the lunch he told him he was like, you know, you have her. Like be be happy with with your, you know, be happy with who you have. You got her. So why are you over here doing all and his sister said the same thing. Like you have her. Like you he so who knows? Maybe Tommy did do it intentionally and said because you know what? You got a blessing. You're not taking care of it. Tommy's you villain. Care. So Tommy's you know what? Villain. Take her away. Let's take Tommy, her away. You Tommy's a villain though. So that's not a villain. Why, why, why mess with their happen? Like, like, Who's how are you happy? gonna give? How are you gonna give Nick advice? Should, how are you gonna give advice? Happy. But how are you gonna give advice to Nick and say be happy? But then at the same time, be like, you know what? F this. I'm gonna go get my girl back. Nick's, Who Nick's said he got presence? her back? Nick's presence. He did Nick. get her back. No, he got hold her hold back. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nick's presence at that restaurant is proof. That he wasn't happy. Yep. Having lunch with with Tommy was proof that even though he got the girl, he wasn't happy. Because so when Tommy says, dude, okay. dude, Tommy said, dude, you got her. Go be happy. And he's like, mm, no, not until I feel like you will stop bothering us. I'm like, he's like, yo, dude, like, and you can you keep you keep saying that, you know, will you be at peace if somebody keep bothering you? Greg. If somebody keep bothering you and you let it bother you the entire time, for example, right? Let's take somebody who's, you know, who's not, who's not all up there. Every morning, they, you know, let's say, you know, they have dementia. Every morning they tell you the same story, right? Mm -hmm. Every morning they tell you the same story because, you know, they're not all up there and you keep, you get annoyed by it. Okay. But it's like being that this person is not all the way up there and you can get annoyed by it. You're literally doing yourself a disfavor. I got you. Because it's like, because it's not bothering them the least to you know to you know to do what they do, but you keep letting it get to you. I understand, that, but see, I truly that is, a, that is a personal responsibility. You are allowing that. I, okay, I truly believe that Nick was trying to get over Tommy, and that's why he went. He was like, "Yo, let's just go out." I know you said he was trying to run, but I feel like Bullshit. he was trying. I feel like he was trying to get over it, but it never. It he never, was trying to run away from got, it. I think he was, I think he was trying it. to. I think he was How trying to. How would he to, have gotten over it just by simply them traveling and going somewhere? Time yeah, he would have. He would have gotten over it. How would he have gotten over it? Because How? because by being in the moment, not worrying about Tommy, you're out with your girl, you're doing things together, you're enjoying your time with her. You focused on her. But okay, I you can do that right then. Why you got to go to another country and another place? I don't you can know. Do that right he, where you are. I agree, but he was trying to do something. <laughs> but but that got interrupted. You can't say it didn't get interrupted. That got interrupted. Great. And that's why all I'm saying upset. is that's why all I'm upset. saying is all I'm saying is you say you said that got interrupted, right? It did. That's by one part title, by the big time. Okay, time okay. That one part of Nick's life, right? That was interrupted. But if if we see every version of Nick was miserable. Every version of him. He, he's the only person in the entire movie who every version you see of, of them of him of themselves, they're miserable. But, but like, if that 
You can't thing, blame that on everybody else when everybody else is happy at some point or another. If that okay, my argument to you is that if that um big time shift didn't happen at that point that I'm talking about, I feel that Nick and Janine would have lived happily ever after. It got interrupted. So now, now he knows that he's not supposed like his spirit got interrupted in that part. And that's what set the whole thing. That's what messed up the I whole thing. I don't think it would have been any different. I think that like let's say Tommy, let's say Tommy hadn't done the um the time shift. And like you said, he was trying to renew, I guess, his connection with his wife. They were going out and all that. Let's say that that lasted for some time. I think it would have been right back to where it was when we first were introduced to them. And then there would have been a time shift and he would have freaked out again. No, 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 and no, no. The whole cycle no, would have no. happened with, again. with my theory, there's no more time shifts. Tommy just leaves them alone. But Tommy's see, still going to continue to do time Tommy, shifts. He's Tommy, still going to okay. continue. No, 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 no. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy can do time shifts, but the only reason why you have the nosebleeds and stuff is because the time shifts are directly affecting them. That's right, what I believe. but he has no control over who it directly Tommy, affects. I, I disagree. I disagree with that. Tommy didn't create. Tommy didn't create the time shift. He he's certainly right. used. He, he, I agree. He didn't. He didn't create the time shift. But every time he he does stuff to manipulate, okay. like Janine, okay. okay. it, it affects. Hold on, 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 hold on. Tommy didn't create time shift. The only thing Tommy affected was the fact that the fact that they were all in the same in a small circle. He simply go back and and do the events differently, so that way their circle is affected. But time shift is something that would have affected everybody one way or another, regardless. Mm hmm. I don't think I don't so you think can't everybody pinpoint I, who's time shift. I don't think everybody's affected. And that's the significance of the of the uh, conference when some people had the nosebleed and some people didn't. Some people were not affected by the time shift at all. But guess what? But guess what? That's a one time shift. It doesn't say every time it happens, you know, everybody will not be the only you know, some people will be affected. It simply says that, you know, as time progress, like you know, when 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 this, when this time shift happened, sometime Let's say this time group A is affected. Next time right. maybe group B will be affected. Maybe next time will be group C. So it's like it doesn't affect everybody every single time. But as you can see in the conference, when it happened, like the people who didn't have a nosebleed or the people who was like, oh, you know, let me just go home and make sure everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Like it could be like, oh, you know what? When, last time I experienced it, when I had a nosebleed, things went wrong. When I didn't have one, thing was fine. But let me just confirm by making a phone call. You mm -hmm. see their phone call, it was there. They, them calling was like, okay, let's just call, make sure everything's good, all good. Meanwhile, Nick was like, what's your name? Who are you married to? What's your mm -hmm. dad? What's your dad? Birth, date of birth? This is like, mm -hmm. okay, dude, like. And he didn't freak oh. out either when she said that she was fine. Remember, she mm -hmm. didn't tell him that she had a nosebleed. So that yeah. would have meant only he had a nosebleed and she didn't. Well, why didn't she have one, but he did? Which part? If it affects, exactly. Wouldn't they both have one if it affects both of you? But that's more than likely why she lied and said, no, I'm fine, so that he would think, oh, nothing has affected me. Right, but but she was affected. But it affected him. It affected both of them. No, I know, but, but Tommy, I'm saying he doesn't know that. Nick did not know that's that. That's true. That's he true. just knew he so had like, to know, please. He thought his wife didn't because she didn't tell him. So he that he felt like it affected him. That's correct. But what we're but, saying is, is that he does not have control over the time ship. Anytime he's carousing through the time ship, it's affecting everybody. But it's almost like, think of it like jury duty. You know, some people get called in, some people don't. But as time continues to go on, your name will get called in and somebody else won't. Like, it's just a matter of time. That's that circle. It's just a matter of time, which is why she's saying every single time, mm -hmm. I'm loving you. Every single time. Whether I'm with yeah. you or I'm not with you. The love is still there. And that's why when he was walking out, he had to stop at the door like, wait a minute, you know. But, but, okay. But now it's, go it's going back to the whole destiny thing because throughout the movie, Nick keeps asking the question. It's like, if I didn't know you, would I still love you? The answer is yes. At least, at least the answer is yes to Janine because for me, but Janine is his true he, soulmate. He said, he said the same thing to Alex though. That's the thing. He did. But I feel like he wasn't really meant to be with her. So once, so so one time, one one time, you know, one time the court, you know, you know, makes sense. Next, the other time, 
The quote doesn't make sense. He, de- he he never answers the question on both on both um like the question is never answered both times. And I think they they made the movie like that intentionally to kind of make you figure it out. It's there's a lot of lo- there's a lot of open ended stuff in the movie like where they don't really explain everything. You know who said she ended up with him? What do you mean? Who said that at the end Janine ended up with um what you call it? What's Tommy? Nick. I mean, no, not Nick. I know she went with Nick. He was no, no, no. At the end, at the, at the end, end, right when he when he turned back, right. Mm-hmm. I do think he ended up with with. Uh, See, Janine. that's what I'm saying. No one knows who she was with because she was by herself taking pictures, like she normally does. Who I, said mm-hmm. that Tommy actually got with her? You mean? So what I'm saying is, okay. Tommy may have did the shift because it's like you know what, you're not appreciating her, you're not happy or whatever. Who knows who she was? She might be single by herself. She's just there. But we, what we do know is that he was still with Alexis, and Alexis was pregnant. Mm-hmm. That's Got it. You. Hmm. So again... And he still, and once again, Nick still was not happy. <laughs> he was miserable um, the whole time. As usual. Before, <laughs> the before was we, Nick. But before we come to a close, right, there's one part that I would like clarification on. When that big shift happened, right, and Nick ended mm-hmm. up in his car in the middle of mm-hmm. nowhere... And he mm-hmm. um he got a phone call. The phone call was from Janine. Was that an actual call? Or was that a recording? What was that? Because she said, I can't find it in my notes, but she said something like, in the next two hours, we're going to forget about this. And then he did forget. Remember, Janine called him. She's like, I've been, that's what she said. She was like, I've been with Tommy for nine years. Was that Janine that called him? Yeah, that was Janine that called him. It's crazy. I, 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 I don't yeah, recall that I part very well. That was, because remember when he got out the car and he wrote, he was trying to call her name in the phone and the phone did not recognize her name. And the but, then he got a, but then he got a phone call. He got a phone call from Janine. And then he said, he was like, he's like, we're always going to be together. Maybe you know, that was you know, a recording. What, that's what I'm saying. What was that? So that's don't something, that's something you got to go back and watch. That was Janine yeah. that called him. Okay. Yeah. So, um, All right. so as we come to a close, I'll ask each of you, starting with Bianca, what do you give the movie? Like, what grade would you give the movie? Like, but oh, from yeah. from A to F, what would you give it? I give why? it. I give it a B. I did like everything about the movie. I like the storyline. Um, how it made you think about with time shift. I think everybody wishes they could maybe go back in time, but mm-hmm. it also shows the dangers of what could happen in going back in time. Like. With the first girl, with the, his sister, it was good. She was able to save her friend, and now her friend was in her life. And then, yeah. unfortunately for Nick, <laughs> he lost his woman. You know, so, I mean, I, I like the idea behind the time shift. I like um, how it challenged you to think outside the box when it comes to um, loving an, an individual and then also challenging insecurities Um I liked it all together, so I'd I'd say it was a B. I'd give it a B. Okay, cool. Uh, Watson, what do you give it? What grade do you give the movie? A C (laughs) minus. Okay, and why? It was like a boring butterfly effect. You know what? I never seen. I never seen that movie. Believe it or not, told him to watch butterfly effect. Butterfly effect. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. Okay, I'll watch it. This movie. This movie. I feel like. It was like a boring version of every single time they've ever did, they've ever done some some similar. Whether it was you know Edge of Tomorrow, um, like there's there's a couple of movies where you know where they like almost do like oh living you know like you know in a, in a time travel in a loop or something of that nature. This was a boring version of it. So okay, yeah, okay. So as, as, um, as far as you know, like okay, I think this was a boring version of it because it's almost like they give you. A whole lot of questions, no answer whatsoever. At least in most of those movies, at some point or another, they gave you something. They gave you, you know, um, you know, a conclusion, uh, you know, some an explanation. This thing gave me much of an explanation. It gave me like, like you said, if the movie kept going, it would have go. It could have gone on ten hours exactly like l- l- like it went with nothing, you know, nothing changing. So, yeah. Okay. So for me, this was a, this was a solid C minus. <laughs> okay, for I'm me, not, I'm not, not, not going to give it a D because it was unwatchable, and you know, and I, and I, and I, I, I finished it, and it was interesting enough, you know, 
to keep my attention. So I'm going to say C minus. It passed. Okay. But you know. Okay. Well, okay. Well, um, y'all already know what I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it an A. Um, mm -hmm. and, and every time I watch the movie, I discover something new. So I have to watch it again. There's always something new I keep like finding in the movie. Um, the movie makes you think. It made me think about my life and things that I wish I could go back and change and how I would correct little things at, at little moments. You know, um, it also it, it makes you think so much um, about how you could be with somebody and you could love them. But deep down, you feel that it's not right, which is a whole topic. Like the movie touched on a lot of things. It touched on the, the idea of um, having a soulmate. And no matter what, you're always going to end up with them. It, it touched on to, to Deja Vu. And I thought the movie was dope. Um, and, and I feel like the movie, I was telling Bianca this earlier, that I feel like the movie got lost in the source of all these other movies. And then with COVID, it can't be in the movie theater. It's on Amazon, but you got to pay for it to see it. So I feel like there's a lot of things like against the movie. But... Um, Overall, I, I like the story, and I like I like how it makes you think. But yeah, um, I mean, like I said, the movie was interesting. But I'm, as I'm watching, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like I've seen this before. You are tired of the questions? There's so many of the movies. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You tired of all the like the unanswered stuff, like the open endedness? Yes. If you gonna give me Inception plus Edge of Tomorrow, like I'm like I'm like I need you I need you to to detail a little bit a little bit better. But it's like now it's like, and also it seemed like it was just like. It was a bore, like in terms of like it's like it's like okay, Tommy talked to you know Tommy talked to Janine, Tommy talked to Alex, Tommy talked you know Tommy talked to Nick, Nick talked to Janine. Nick talk, it's almost like okay, can we can something happen actually? Can something actually happen? Like, like you want it, like, you want it in your version. Nick would go back and kill Tommy. <laughs> I'm like I'm not no no not, not even kill because I don't understand that kind of movie. But I'm like I'm like do something. It seemed like it seemed like it seemed like honestly. At some point, I predicted the conversation they were gonna have. I was predicting the conversation. Like Nick was just something. I'm, 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 and time is gonna, you know, it's gonna be scary. Says I'm slick. Time says I'm slick. It's almost like, like I've seen this before. Just in like, they, like different you. connections, different parts of the different movies. So I'm like, yeah. I, I have yes. a question. You're saying there are open-ended questions and all of that, like not understanding. But I think that was the whole premise of it. I think they wanted you to think out, like think outside of us, like wonder what it is. Or yes, of what course, I understand happened. that. Like at the end, I didn't like the ending, but then I understood why they made the ending. But I was not happy about the ending. Like really, yeah, yeah. How we I, going? You're right. You're right. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, um, normally, I normally like 99 percent of the times I hate endings like that. But for me, the only reason I don't hate the ending is because I truly believe he ended up with her. So you don't know how like, you got it. You don't it's know like, how you got it. It's like, it's like, yeah, they could have showed it, but I, I believe like if he didn't end up with her, he wouldn't have turned back. He would have just kept going. That's what I believe. But but yeah, you know, I'm sure, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's, you know, that, 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 like, that, that's, the, uh, that's the image they put in your head. Like he stopped Turn back because that's you know that's who he's destined to be with. That's, that's the right. image they give you. And, that's and, right. And, 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 and that's fair. But it's like, but it's like again, I'm like I understand having some open ended quick question. Like I, I like the end. I like they like hmm. That looks like the moment you know they 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 realize the distance away for each other, or they're like hmm. There's something special about this person, and that led them together. It's like they give you that. You know, I'm like if they give you that at the end, fine. But even in the middle, it's like. Um, is Tommy is Tommy manipulating? Is Tommy doing this? Is Tommy doing that? Why is Nick like this now? Why is Nick? I'm like, yo, too many questions. Give us some answers, because nobody yeah. understood Nick the entire movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yeah. And then at the end, but, you know what? <laughs> if the cycle mm -hmm. could possibly continue because okay, if you're believing that Nick would end back up with Janine, now you're bringing Alexis into the role of Tommy, but it's on the opposite side. So now, because mm -hmm. um, remember, Alexis is pregnant now. Oh, Alex! If yeah, Nick, yeah, yeah. Uh, if yeah. Nick was to leave Janine, leave Alex to be with Janine, she may have a chip on her shoulder now because oh, you stole my man from me, the father of my child. So now this whole thing is starting all over again. Maybe she might want to do a time shift now. That's true. So that we can be together with the, you know, it's like 
Mm. That's true. It, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like I feel like it's a loop. I feel like we're watching different parts of the loop. Mm. Yeah, you know? that's what I'm saying. Like that's what I'm saying. Like you know, the penal is vintage for you know that you get or they show you. You could pick out who the who your villain is. That's true. Because because if you flip the script and put it from Tommy's vintage point, he's basically telling you like yo, he's just trying to do the right thing by undoing what Nick did by taking his girl away. That's true. No, I, I get it. So, it's, it's all about the vantage so, point. Exactly. And that's what make for me, that's what makes think makes it interesting because you could like argue from both sides. I feel like it's just um Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I feel like it's a good talking movie. Like it it, it makes you think about stuff. Like and and, and, and you always you, I also wonder if one day we could ever see time travel. Who the hell knows? Um I see it. This was very crazy sir. enough. Sir, not in this lifetime, okay? We can't even agree on Black Lives Matter. <laughs> so, clearly, uh, we're not traveling anywhere anytime soon. Like, and even if we could, no. it would only be the elite. Like, how they're going to exactly. space. It would be, exactly. you know. He's like, he's like, oh, yeah. Unless you could spend $6 billion on something, you can, you know, you cannot be here. He's like, okay, great. So, that would be like two of you. No problem. Enjoy. So, it's like, <laughs> as far as, you know, um, in order to for a race to evolve, we must be on one accord. And nowhere in the world are we in one accord. So mm -mm. Yeah. the whole idea is kind of scary to me because I can see rich white men going back all the way to slavery and then making sure that the Civil War is not won. Slavery? <laughs> they will go so back even further. Will continue. Yo, they will they will go back even further and ensure that everybody that come here remains slaves forever. That's like, right. Mm. But even immigrants, even immigrants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. They go back and change all of that. So yeah, I don't. It's, I don't a, it's know. a it's a it's an interesting conversation, and um, yeah. we'll have more discussions. We'll have more discussions. I'm not gonna hold you guys, but again, thank you for for joining us. Um, yes, joining the well. table tonight. It was a great discussion, and um, yes, it was. We'll, we'll do this again thank soon. You guys. Thank you for checking out Table of Cinema. If you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell notification to be alerted when the next show is posted. Also, visit tablechatter.com if you'd like to make a donation and follow me on Instagram at tablechatter and DM me if you'd like to say hello or if you'd like to be a participant on a future episode. Take care.